previously on fabulous i just found out you have a yeah. 19 year old yeah i have a 19 year old she's in college in mm. scotland and, and you uh, don't look anything like someone <laughs> with a 19 year old as I a know. compliment thank you so much yeah. i am 40 myself so okay <laughs> lovely, lovely, lovely so that's what happens sometimes when uh, yeah but anyways i had my baby <laughs> What has been the most fulfilling aspect of being a mom? Oh, always coming home to the hug. <laughs> you know, when you come home and they go, say, mommy, and they hug you. Mm. And um, seeing your children going in front of your eyes and um, them growing up to be kind and gentle and brave and strong and courageous and doing what they want to do. I think that is fulfilling for mm. me and continues to be fulfilling moving forward not just my children but all the other children that are around us you know and um all my nieces and nephews who um look up to me I, you know i i feel shy when i say that but why <laughs> why do you <laughs> feel shy <laughs> Why do you feel say, shy? I know there are moms who say, you know, Auntie Sweetie and <laughs> Auntie Becky would want you to do this. I would never feel for Auntie Becky. <laughs> so, yes, I think that is quite mm. fulfilling that I am living my life and um, people actually um, finding ambition, you know. They are looking at me and saying that they want to be like me. Mm. And they're actually striving to and working so. to do so. And I'm happy to be part of their process. Mm. And um, especially in the, the space that I am in, I'm seeing more younger girls going to law school who were in my predicament. This one of my girls, mm. she went to law school now. She's married, she has a child, and she's still in law school. Okay. And this is her last semester, and I'm proud Oh, fair. See, yeah, yeah. You know, people like that doing well, moving forward, um, seeing the process through, seeing the process mm. through, and for for us as now older women, not being afraid of the younger girls coming up. Absolutely. You know, and and encouraging them to grow, encouraging them to be the best. Let me tell you another story. I went to a hospital. Mm. I was not feeling well, and I entered the doctor's room and when i entered the room there was this younger little girl <laughs> <laughs> sitting there as the doctor okay and i looked at her and i immediately got angry okay like you know why this tiny person <laughs> and what can she do about my illness but then when i sat down the holy spirit spoke to me and said rebecca isn't this what you have been asking for all your years of doing girl child education feminism mm. affirmative action bill menstrual hygiene yeah you know build toilets for girls do this isn't this what you're looking yeah. for that this is a girl who has never missed one day of school mm. she hasn't had to carry what's on her head before she went to school mm. she hasn't had to stop school because her parents will prioritize paying for her brother exactly as opposed to her she hasn't had one um, pedophile, you know, worry her. She has gone to school yeah. and she has done what she's here. She's your daughter and you are angry. Why? <laughs> so I had to change my mindset mm. about it and, and say, you know, I'm proud of you. Actually, we wrote a, a, a blog on it. You okay. Know, okay. To say that, you know, this is sometimes when you pray for something you want and it comes to pass, you have to be able to see it. And so I, I'm proud of some of the little things that we've been able to do. It'd be, I'm, I'm curious to know what made you upset, though. Oh, you know, when, maybe it was my own <laughs> <laughs> feeling of self-importance. <laughs> <laughs> because go sometimes we do project <laughs> all these things, yeah. all these, and they're very mm. unconscious. Exactly. But we just do them. Exactly. We're, it's difficult for us to correct. Yes. And in the correction, even when we've corrected ourselves or we viewed ourselves, we're unable to apologize to the other person. Yeah. So yeah. it's important that you did that and honored yeah. her. Yeah. yeah. And that's a conversation that people must know about. Yeah. So in this new role, are you still doing Sunday school? 
not as much as I would have loved. <laughs> not as much as I would have loved. But anytime I get the opportunity, which is like once a month, mm. I go to my own my own congregation. Okay. Because most of the time I would be in another congregation mm. doing something else that is not children's service. I'll go to my own congregation. I teach the twinkle class, which is the, the youngest, and we get the opportunity to sing and mm. to dance and to jump around and um, to teach them things about um, Bible, mm. the Bible God and how they should live their life. Um, but I think, you know, um, it's important that for me, I am still grounded in the people who know me and, and in my church circles and in my congregation. So I, I consciously make an effort to, to try and do that more and more. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about your children. I, going back to mothering and motherhood, I know they're all teenagers now. They're out of the house. At least two of them are. Yeah. Um, how are you dealing with that separation? Yeah. How are they dealing with the separation? Yeah. How did you prepare them for it? Yeah. Um, what, is, what does that look like? Okay. So, um, in, the, in the past three years, two of my kids have gone to senior high school. So, my house is, is quite empty now. <laughs> it's, it's empty. And I have more food. You know, too much it, food. Too much food because the people who eat the food <laughs> <laughs> are not there. Okay. Uh, and it takes a little getting used to. I th I think Ghanaian parents maybe sometimes we are not taught how to prepare our children for senior, for mm -hmm. secondary school, for boarding school. Nobody prepared me for boarding school. You know, the preparation was to buy a trunk, a chop box, fill mm -hmm. it, and send it off to school. And I, I I do think, you know, now looking at it that I really did any special preparation for them okay. in terms of, um, you know, their mindset. But mm. of course, when they were going, you would give them the normal advice that we give to everybody. Go and learn, you know, don't get into bad friends and things like that. And then now that they are there, I think what we've been doing more is to support them in building their independence, mm. you know, because when you're in school, so many things come. The influences. the influences are there and, and you need to find who you are there because your your students and your mates will be with you in for a long time and you, so to support them to be able to find their independence and for them to have their voice as well mm. so there's a there's a balance and, and as teenagers you always have to balance it so that one doesn't go uh, beyond the other but so far so good I think it's, it's going well. I look forward to Christmases and Easter's when they are all, mm. but then you get some movement in the house, you get some jokes and things. In the meantime, when they are not there, then, um, we, we, we miss them. How are you managing the empty nest? It's not almost empty though, because mm. you still have one child at home. Mm. Mm. But how is she coping? Yes, yeah, so that then becomes the new frontier, <laughs> you know, being at home with, with one. Like an only child. Like an only child thing, you know. <laughs> um, but we, I think it's about the parents working together mm. in the interest of the child. Um, so we do a lot of things jointly, mm. you know, which we have always done anyway. Um, when we are going to visit... Um, the older kids we go together we talk together we go and buy things together okay um now she's learning more how to be independent herself because if you have an older brother and an older sister there are some things you don't do in the mm. house but she's washing dishes she's frying eggs she's eight years of course i'm standing by <laughs> <laughs> learning how to fry egg take care of her her pets the dogs in mm. the house sweep her room and that sort of thing uh, we're getting used to the silence in the house, the silence in the house. Um, but I think overall, it's a phase that everybody, you know, parents will go through, you know. And um, for me, it's hit me quite hard. Mm -hmm. It's hit me quite hard. So one day, people are in the house, the next day, everybody is gone. And yeah, you come home and you're like, okay, so what do I do now? <laughs> and then, there's nobody to shout at. <laughs> And there are no homeworks, you know, the homeworks are not as many as possible. Even in the morning, going to work, you don't have to do as much work as you used to. But um, it's about getting used to their faces mm. as, as they come up as a parent. And for me, it's, 
I'm thinking to myself, so in 16 years, all this has happened in the yeah. 16 years of my life. And I never thought it would be over. And now 16 years is just like this and my house is quiet again. Um, what, what, what would I have regretted if mm. I hadn't had those 16 years with them where they were fully mine? you know and fully in the house even though sometimes i forgot them in school <laughs> it just happened once yes it happened only once it happened only once please <laughs> <laughs> but i think some of the things that we've already taught them around integrity mm. around honesty mm. hard work um, um politeness you know those things continue and when you go to the school you hear some of those things that continues to happen Wonderful. with them and we're happy that that um, those um, values um, will stay with them. What are you looking forward? I'm looking forward to exploring parts of me that I haven't had the uh, opportunity to do in the past. Okay. So I've recently started writing again. You know, I've always wanted to write. I recently started writing again, spending a little bit more time reflecting mm. and writing. Um, I want to explore a few things in the arts space to see how far that that takes mm. me, um, which I might not have been able to do in the past because it was just um, too many um, things happening there. Um, I'm, I want to see how the writing goes. There's been other things that are taking up my space, um, being on boards, being um, in associations. Mm. You know, people want you to come and speak on this and speak on that and do that so those things um are also there and mm. it's something that strategically i have decided to do okay um to see how i can give more to other people and if those spaces are open to me i am happy to use them mm. to do that. Yeah. Mm. i know you're you're doing a lot of mentoring as well yeah. especially girls yeah what, what what are some of the surprises that are coming up for you oh wow okay so i always thought mentoring was for like senior high schools and junior high school but you re i realized that there's a whole class of young ladies mm. who still need mentoring they might have finished school they are even working some of them are married but they still have dilemmas that they can't discuss with people, anybody, with anybody. Yeah. And for you just to be a listening ear and just to, you know, tell them that it will be okay. I have gone through that. You know, sometimes that is enough for them to be able to then take the next step. Because for them, it's dark mm. and they are confused, you know. And I think for our girls, our girls are so brilliant. They are so sharp from a very young age and they are shooting stars and they shoot up yeah and then now they finish school the best student in this the best student in that and then they start work and then the terrain is different the challenges are different and sometimes they cannot cope mm. and so just <clears throat> helping them through that process telling them that this is a learning stage um if you don't learn here you have the same challenge next time so you have to go through it stick through it you can't um stop mm. you know and helping them to understand how to negotiate some of those things it's something that i think i've done a lot of mm. the mentoring hasn't been intentional like to say one two three four come, come. I'll mentor you, so. <laughs> but then you know i get to work with young intelligent brilliant young girls who are <clears throat> professionals in their mm. field and you find that sometimes things outside work you know, are the things that they grapple with most. And if you want to get the best of them in the professional space, then you need to go with them into the totality. Yes, yeah, the totality the of their being so that, you know, they are not unbalanced. Mm. And I think that's something that I've been doing. It started unconsciously, but now much more consciously that when I'm working with young ladies, I know that, you know, depending on how, they want to open up and even that one so it's a conversation that you need to have so that you can work with them in that space great what do you find troubling with the way we're mothering children today 
especially in Accra. <laughs> especially in Accra, especially, especially in Accra. Accra. But that, you have perspective on that because you've been traveling quite a bit yes. in the last two years yes. across yes. the country. Across the country. Yeah. Yeah. I think one of the things is how we, I would say, overprotect our children. Okay. And keep them from learning the basics of life. Mm. My children go to school across from my house they were in a school that was not too far from my house it mm. would be like a 10 minutes walk and so we got some time we let the older two walk by themselves to okay school. because they just have to go through a pathway and then they cross a somewhat major road mm. with an inter intercession and a traffic light and then they get to school and so we let them walk by themselves and we got a, a whole WhatsApp message from my parents. Saying, <laughs> you know, why do you let your children cross the road by themselves? It's not safe. This, this, this. And so we responded and said, we appreciate what you're saying, but uh, we have taught them how to cross the road. Yeah. We have taught them, you know, we've worked with them actually on that road to say, when you get here, look left, look right, look left again. Do not talk to strangers on the street. You know, all the things that they need to be able to do that 10 minute journey we have taught them to be able to do mm. we haven't just left them to be able to do it and um, even when we used to live far away from when they used to where they swam we would put them in a trotro mm. and they would come by themselves because we're teaching them life in yeah, Accra, they need to I survive think. they need to survive with and of course we had done the risk analysis mm. So let me give you a typical example. Where my children used to go to school, I do not want to mention anything, yeah. but where they want to go to where they went to school, um, they had to walk, say, five minutes to get to a main road. Then there was one car, you know, you had to take just one car. So they sat in the car and got off at a, a, a drop. Mm -hmm. Now at that drop, we had a woman who was selling banana. Mm -hmm. And we knew the woman. We bought banana from her. So we say, when you get there, say hello to Auntie Selena. Okay. So when they get there, they will say hello to Auntie Selena. I'll say, now give them some banana. They cross the street and then they come home. And so from the school, we knew that it would take them about five minutes to walk here. They take a car here and then they walk home. So if we do not find them, we call mm -hmm. Auntie Selena yeah. to check. And then we call their teachers to check. And so we already had checks and balances in place to support them. But I think this is something that we have to do more mm. um, here to, to, to let our children explore a little bit more on their own. Um, take into consideration the risks. So yeah. you're not just leaving them on their yeah. own. But you yourself have done the risk analysis and you know what they can do that is workable. And then in the communities as well, I think that one, the children are supported, you know, to be able to move around. Everybody knows you in the community, mm. so you cannot go anywhere. And then the challenge of this, I think it's getting better in communities where uh, when there's a funeral, all the children come out. Ah. And, you know, they become dancing, comp you know, they do dancing competitions and they start this whole um, culture of them not going to school because mm -hmm. of those things. I think it's going down, but that is something that maybe in Ghana, um, communities might have to look at in bringing up their younger children. Those are great points. I think I, I was sitting here listening to you and I said those parents probably would have beaten Michael and I because mm -hmm. at some point we had Nana going all the way to airport mm -hmm. for intern. He's done it twice mm -hmm. and he was going by himself. So mm -hmm. the first day we had one, we didn't even go ourselves. We had one, um, someone take him, mm -hmm. showed him the route. Yes. Um, how to cross the street because it was airport is a major yes, road. Yes. So how to cross the street. Yeah. And then that was the first time we got him a phone mm, because we said yes. you need to keep in yes, touch. So yes. there are milestones yes. for whenever you need to. So I need to see the prompts yes. so that I know you're okay. Yeah. Um, coming back home is the mm. same. Once you get to the office, we're fine. But coming back home is the same. So you get in the car, we know. Mm. You get to the next stop, we know. Yes. And then you come home. Yeah. But that process, they need yeah. to grow. Yes. And if we are calling our children future leaders that cultivation process must start today so mm. yes um don't beat us it is not child 
What do they even call it? <laughs> child abuse, child. It is, they need to grow. So yeah. as long as it's done within certain boundaries. Exactly. Um, the interesting part is, you know, those of us, those without cars. Yes. You find that they're oh, these three ones, year, Oh, they go by themselves. Yeah, and then the other one is holding a yes. smaller one. Sometimes I want to actually, those ones yes. I want to be their parents. Yes. <laughs> Because yeah, I'm like, no, that is, is, is too, they're too small. Yeah, they go yeah. Ever. But yeah. I remember when um, my son had to do that the first time, and I put him in a trotro, and I said, hey, mate, obesi wa lego <laughs> Uh, and there were other women in the car. Yeah. Mami mo pamocho obesi wa you know. <laughs> I had these Last brother, brother, yeah, in the, in the entire society, <laughs> take care of him. <laughs> the entire community. Yes, but that's yes. what they say too. It takes a whole village yes, to raise a child. Yes. So and he himself was excited. Mm, this is the first time, and then you give him like some two series buy both fruit on the way. He's so excited. Then he came back and said, "Oh, even when they go that fancy, they dropped him a Madina." Mm. Because, you know, sometimes the cars go and drop out, but you don't get to leg on. Okay. So then there was a lady who then put him in another car okay. to get him to leg on. And so he got there. Okay. I was so excited. I'm like, yes, that's the sound. Yeah, like. he's achieved something. And then you build the momentum to yes. keep achieving. Yes. That's amazing. I like that very much. I think, yes, indeed. A lot of, I think it's come up even today mm -hmm. where people just say we're overprotecting the children. Of course, there are a lot of... Um, yeah societal yeah. <laughs> misnomers yes. that has also creeped into our society so i think for most people there's a bit of scare yeah. there but we need to go beyond that yeah. scare what advice would you like to give younger mothers well um, they should pray a lot to the lives of their children but also plan with their partners mm. but what you find is that sometimes you have different upbringings and you don't um, have that conversation earlier on it becomes a challenge and the children even use it against you know they start playing you against each other so to have a conversation about it and um to 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 to, to know the goal you know that's why i hear you know you are bringing up the child exactly you know what it's in isn't that the yeah. word? Yeah, you know, yeah, you are actually, you know, instilling something to the child, not just leaving the person to grow um, biologically. And so, having that at the back of your head, knowing that it will all shall pass mm. when they are very young and you are frazzled, and that is the word, you know, yeah. you are frazzled. Because then this is two years, this is four years, this is, you know, you're pregnant and the children are just too much around you and it gets into your head. Just know that. It will pass. Take a deep breath and relax. And not to take yourself too seriously. Mm. To take one day at a time. Um, but to know that invest in your children. Yeah. I think that's the most important thing. Invest in your children at a very young age because those ones, they, if you wait for them to go too much before you start investing in them, you might have lost the moment. Mm. So investing your children at a very young age and then every child has their own personality understanding that as well that baby a might be totally different from baby b and so adjusting your parenting style for the children that and their personalities that god has given you and to see how to support them in all that they do so thank you ever so much for joining us Teko, thank you so much. It's thank been you. good to see you and to catch yes. up. Um, for those of you listening, please do subscribe, keep watching, keep sharing, share your own stories. We want to hear them. We want you to bless others with your own stories. The greatest part for me is that when your children are younger, so we go through phases, we evolve, yeah. the world changes daily. Yeah. So embrace the moment, enjoy the moment. Yeah. So you plan ahead, you're deliberate with your actions. You may get overwhelmed. I think that's the message. You will be overwhelmed. There's no qualms about yes. that. But in your moment of stillness, you would find your peace. So continue to find your peace as you continue you support your young people to grow and cultivate them into the beings that they've been created to be, everything that they've been created to be, even us. You support you yourself to also grow and become everything that you've been created to be. Thank you very much. Do join us again next time.
on Famlos, on Leader Freak TV, on YouTube.